Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel for this July series. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. Trev's mooching around the garden, doesn't know really where to go. He's got his stick down there, so I'm sure you'll see him munching that through the video, I'm sure. This video is all about chipping made simple. Now, as we know, anything in golf isn't simple, but I'm going to give you the basics about how to get this club working for you every time in a chip shot because as we know for a chip shot and we're talking something ranging from five yards to 20 yards so it's not a pitch shot it's a chip shot around the greens here for something so small you can see a lot of people having problems around the greens because number one the fundamentals and the technique isn't right and then because of that it gets psychological as well and i'm going to show you the pitfalls that you can fall into and more importantly how to get out of them Okay, so Trev settled down, I'm going to get the front camera set up and we'll see you in a little while. Okay everyone, so thanks very much for joining me for another video on this July series. Hope everyone's keeping well. And like I said in the intro, for such a small swing as you can see, there's so many problems I see people, club, club golfers especially, having problems with their chipping action. Now I don't know if it's a feeling of trying to scoop the ball in the air, trying to get the ball kind of, that was a bit thin, <laughs> trying to get the ball up, I don't know but a loss of technique very quickly becomes a loss of confidence. And it can be brought back quite quickly. And chipping, because of the variance of lies and how they can be a little bit kind of awkward and potentially having to chip over something, that can bring its problems. And one thing I like to say to golfers is, do not bring your golf swing to a chipping action. It's completely different. As you can see there, it's only a small swing either side of the ball. So I'm going to show you a few positions to get into to let this golf club do the work for you because a lot of people have problems with chipping. They try and create some speed and create some kind of force going through the swing and the chip shot and that can bring a lot of problems. But a lot of problems I see and you're going to see from the both camera angles is if you put the club in the wrong position going back you're going to have to make a correction going through. And in chipping, you don't have the time to, um, to save it really. So is the first area I'd like to work on just very quickly is posture. We have our feet very close together. That stops us moving around. Keep our weight on our front leg, just only 60, 40. Remember, nothing is extreme here. That allows our head to be over the ball and our hands to be past the ball as well. So you kind of have this look of, You've got your head kind of over the ball at least, but even so, if it's slightly ahead of the ball, even better, a little bit of weight on the left side. So remember, you don't want anything too extreme. If you've been watching Phil Mickelson on YouTube, well, Phil Mickelson's an expert at chipping. So his way of chipping, albeit you can layer that onto probably a professional, is quite difficult because you're dealing with kind of a very fine margin of result. There's a lot of good in what he says, but I think there's kind of some pitfalls as well, and I'm gonna tell you what they are. So posture, feet close together, maybe a club width, hands ahead, and your, um, your kind of nose ahead of the ball as well. So keeping everything where it is. So nothing moves from there, so you're staying very stationary. So what dictates distance, if I can say that, is backswing length, not how hard you hit it for a chip shot, because there is no hit in a chip. So the distance for a chip shot is dictated by the length of backswing and over a period of time you'll get to know how far to take the club back for what certain shot. There's no force in a chip shot at all because a lot, a lot of problems come from changing gear too quickly. So in a chip shot you want to stay in first and second gear, really, very soft. But a lot of people I see having problems start off in first and then go to fourth. And that produces a lot of problems technically in their bodies and mechanically what goes on there. You could see there the difference between a good chip shot on the left and the bad chip shot, which I showed you there on the right. You can see just by creating speed, it can activate the wrong parts of your body. So the first thing to do, apart from this posture work and the setup, is speed being able to kind of be nice and soft throughout the chip shot. Okay, that sounds great on paper, but if you're in the wrong place going back on the backswing, you have to create some sort of correction and that can produce the wrong type of speed. You can't let go from a wrong position at the top of the backswing or the completion of a backswing for a chip shot. So let me show you what I mean. So in a normal swing, there's an arc. The club goes round us in this little semicircle. 
In a chip shot, there isn't. It's very linear, we call it, so it's pretty straight. There's obviously going to be a little bit, but generally, because we're standing so close to it, this allows now the club head to swing quite straight. Obviously, it's come inside the ball very slightly, but what you don't want to do for a chip shot is bring the club inside. Number one, it doesn't create any natural height because you haven't used your wrists here and you haven't kind of set the club. And number two, it's difficult to bring the club back to the ball consistently from there after a period of time. So a lot of people I see who struggle with their chip shots bring the club inside too quickly. So that's the first port of call. Good posture. And then from here, you're just setting the club. So you're using a little bit of wrist. So there's more club head movement than wrist movement and hand movement you can see there and you're keeping the club relatively straight out there. So you're hinging the club. Imagine there's kind of a brick wall. You can see the line there with my foot. You're keeping the club outside. You'd rather be this side of the fence for a chip shot of the line than this side. So keeping the club outside the line produces natural height. And then from there, you can just let go from there. Get yourself in the right position at the top of the completion of the backswing for a chip shot you can just drop the club on the ball. There is no correctional force to be made. Now, obviously, if you're having trouble with chipping, that's easier said than done. It's very light grip, probably a one or two out of 10 maximum. That allows the club head to feel heavy. Set it on the outside. I can see in the corner of my eye, the club is outside here. And then from here, it's allowed to drop on the club head. I've got natural height and gravity can work for me from there. So there's no hit in a chip. Great little statement. What creates distance is length of backswing. A little bit longer that time, just drop it, you see. So there's no, if someone asks the question, well, where do I finish? Don't finish, just let the club face, just drop. So there's no real follow through, you see. So momentum will take you. Obviously I see people kind of collapsing or lifting up like that. So obviously there is a structure of your arms. You outside drop and you can see my arm structure is nice and light here, but my arms are still the same nice and light still but I'm not definitely not lifting up here so I'm keeping my head nice and still remember give the club the best chance to drop down on the ball let the ball get in the way there is no hit there's no change of gear it's actually weirdly a little bit of a slowdown more than anything let me show you so if you're having trouble with your chipping forget about what the pros do remember they're experts you're looking for something repeatable here so if you're having trouble and you feel like you've got a bit of the yips or you're hitting, hitting at it too hard, soft with the hands throughout the whole swing. Let the back swing be dictated length so you're going to feel like you're going to swing the club a little bit longer than probably normal. And then slow down. Feel the club heavy, like a one or two maximum grip pressure. Keep it as light as you can, in your fingers helps too. As light as you can, let it drop. Remember, slowing down, let it drop, will create natural down as well. Softness in the hands too. Remember what I said at the start, any sort of change of pace can really kind of, over a period of time, time if you told me to start off on a one on the backswing and then move to a five, over a period of time, I'm gonna lose form, I'm gonna lose technique and my mechanics are gonna be all wrong. I remember giving a lesson, he was really having problems with chipping and he had had for a very, very long time. And unfortunately, it was just before he was going out. But I looked over at the chipping green, he was having a bit of a problem, so I ran over there. And the only thing I said to him was lighten his grip and feel like he's taking the club out, so the club is going straight and not behind him. And then from there, give up. Let the club drop. There's no, there's no moving, just let the club drop. There's no control at all. And it took a two or three to kind of trust it but after that he hit like six in a row really kind of consistent um, but obviously you go on the golf course and then there's bunkers you need to chip over and there's horrible lies potentially or there's a target there in terms of the hole it kind of beckons you into kind of bad habits but all I would say is the transfer over from a net to a chipping green to a golf course is don't worry what's out there Forget about the actual result. Forget about what's out there. Focus on the actual movements and your technique. So just to close, I'm gonna show you one pitfall that I see too many golfers try and do. Now, this is what I mean about the Phil Mickelson style of chipping. 
let me show you the difference between this and this this is the Phil Mickelson way and you see the difference there I'm really keeping angle of my wrist there that's the Phil Mickelson way now albeit you can layer that onto an expert onto a professional but what that brings the trap door of that technique is it brings in the leading edge the leading edge is this bit right on the front what that does that encourages let's say the leading edge to dig into the ground now if you're not millimeter perfect and you hit that leading edge of blade of grass behind the ball you're going to fat it to be technically perfect and hit the blade of grass perfect i think that's really difficult it can give you that leading edge into the ground first so i would not do that i would encourage the club to come down where it started away from the ball you can make your backswing you can stop if you like and check it yep the club's out in front of me it's not behind my hands and from here you can just slow motion bring the club back to where it starts so you can see you're returning the club back to where it starts you can see i'm not moving my head just allowing my hands just to come down that's a great little exercise to do so you're setting your wrists and then you're back to unsetting them back to where you are and that is a chipping action slowed down obviously the momentum takes me on a bit further so it's allowing the club to drop into the ball there's no guidance outside all the work is done with the backswing if you put the backswing in the position then you can let gravity take hold and be your friend from there club out let go number one feeling in a chip shot if you want to change it just give up let the club do the work but remember it's got to be in the right position at the top of the backswing and then you're just moving your hands setting the club up in the air straight and drop okay look i don't have a problem with my chipping so it's easier for me to obviously layer these ingredients into my chipping action if you do have some problems or if you want to improve your chipping it will be a little bit harder to kind of trust that but the two biggest ingredients i can give you is make the backswing a little bit straighter so you're not bringing the club inside because if you do that it doesn't matter what where you go from there there's going to have to be corrections and the biggest trap door as well the biggest mistakes i see people do is create too much speed too much hit there's no effort in a chip shot at all so what dictates distance is length of backswing okay everyone so my first chipping video for a long time and definitely my first chipping video during this july series so i hope it can be some value to you and remember these shots around the greens hey eh, trev can be real kind of shot savers and can real take some shots off your round because if you get round the greens and start making mistakes you can lose a lot of shots around the greens as we know having a recipe that you can kind of rely on can be a real confidence boost and that's not to say we're going to hit the odd funny shot with our chip shot of course we do um, but it's being able to stop that process and stop the snowball of problems happening from there okay everyone so from another sunny morning it's not like this all the time in the southeast of england i can assure you um, i bid you farewell thank you very much for everyone's support so just from myself well you saw trev just quickly there but just from myself mainly for this one we'll see you tomorrow have a great golfing day if you're playing and we'll see you then cheerio